Hello students, I am Sanjana Kapatagi, Assistant Professor, Department of Computer Science and Engineering, AITM Belgavi. Let us continue with the video lectures on storage area networks. In this video, we will be studying about storage provisioning. That is the last concept in the model number 1. Storage provisioning is the process of assigning storage resources to hosts based on capacity, availability and performance requirements of applications running on the hosts. Storage provisioning can be performed in two ways that is first one is traditional and the second one is virtual. So this virtual provisioning leverages the virtualization technology for provide provisioning storage for applications. Uh, so in this video we shall study both traditional as well as virtual storage provisioning let us understand tra traditional storage provisioning in traditional storage provisioning physical disks are logically grouped together and a required raid level is applied to form a set called a raid set the number of drives in raid set and the raid level determine the availability capacity and performance of the raid set so it is highly recommended that the raid set should be created from the drives of the same type same speed and same capacity to ensure the maximum usable capacity reliability and the consistency in performance for example consider if drives of different capacities are mixed in a raid set then the capacity of the smallest drive is used from each disk in the set to make up the rates uh, rate sets overall capacity so that is the issue if we have combined uh, disks of different sizes in a rate set then the capacity of the smallest drive will be used from each disk in the uh, entire set to entire set to make up the uh, rate sets overall capacity the remaining capacity of the larger drives remains unused that's why it is recommended that we should use the drives of same capacity same performance and same speed okay so likewise mixing of higher revolutions per minute that is rpm drives with lower rpm drives lowers the overall performance of the rate set okay so then uh, rate sets usually have a large capacity because they combine the total capacity of the individual drives in the set that is why the size of the raid sets will be normally large logical units will be created from the raid sets by partitioning uh, like we have seen the slices of the raid set in the previous videos uh, the available capacity uh, into smaller units okay we are going to partition the raid set making the available capacity into smaller units and these units are then assigned to the host based on their storage requirements based on the requirements of the storage these smaller units will be assigned assigned to the hosts uh, then uh, logical units will be spread across the physical disk that belong to that particular set each logical unit created from the raid set is assigned a unique id which is called as lun that is logical unit number l u n lun okay so uh, LUNs, these LUNs hide the organization and composition of the RAID set from the hosts. Okay. So LUNs created by traditional storage provisioning methods are also referred to as thick LUNs to distinguish them from the LUNs created by virtual provisioning methods. Uh, you can see in the figure it shows a raid set consisting of five disks that have been sliced, sliced or partitioned into two LUNs that is LUN 0 and LUN 1 as I said LUN is nothing but logical unit number so this uh, these disk drives which is of uh, which is having uh, five disks uh, it is divided into two partitions okay uh, that is LUN 0 and LUN 1 these LUNs are then assigned to host 1 and host 2 for their storage requirements this you can see it in the figure the storage uh, capacity is divided into two things but the one is LUN 0 LUN 1 these two are logical units which are then assigned to 
to hosts so when a lun is configured and is assigned to a non virtualized host a bus can is required to identify the lun this lun appears as a raw disk to the operating system to make this task, uh, disk usable it is formatted with the file system and then the file system will be mounted onto the system so uh, in case of virtualized host environment so that is in case of a physical uh, host environment now coming to in a virtualized host environment uh, the lun is assigned to the hypervisor which recognizes it as a raw disk okay hypervisor is a layer between your virtual system and your physical system which you have already studied in operating system concepts okay so it's a layer between your physical machine and the virtual machine so this lun in case of virtualized environments this lun will be assigned to the hypervisor which recognizes this lun as a raw disk it thinks that that lun particular lun is a raw disk uh, this disk is configured with the hypervisor file system and then virtual disks are created on it okay so these virtual disks are files on the hypervisor of the uh, hypervisor file system okay so the virtual disk are then uh, assigned to a virtual machine and appear as a raw disk to them okay so to make the virtual disk usable to the virtual machine similar steps like same the st uh, same type of sets steps are followed in a non virtualized environment here the lun space should be shared and accessed simultaneously by multiple virtual machines so that the particular lun space can be accessed by multiple virtual machines so that is the advantage of virtual environment so virtual machines can also access a lun directly on the storage system so in this type of method the entire lun will be allocated to a single single virtual machine so the storing data in this way will be recommended when the applications running on the virtual machine are uh, response time sensitive response time sensitive and sharing storage with other virtual machines may impact their response time okay so then the direct access method is also used when a virtual machine is clustered with a physical machine so in such cases the virtual machine is required to access the lun that is being accessed by the physical machine the next concept is lun expansion that is meta lun so meta lun is a method to expand luns that require additional capacity or performance expanding is nothing but adding more capacity to the existing lun so a meta lun can be created by uh, combining two or more luns so a meta lun consists of a base lun and one or more compo component luns so meta lun can be either concatenated or striped so lun expansion is nothing but expanding the capacity of the existing lun how it is done that is done by combining two or more luns okay so that is called as meta lun it has one base lun and the other one will be called as component lun okay it can be either con uh, of uh, it can be either of com concatenated or will be of striped one okay so concatenated expansion simply adds the additional capacity to the base lun okay so in such type of expansion the component luns are not required to be of the same capacity because we are just go going on adding different sizes to it okay so it need not have the same capacity as of the base lun that is component lun okay component luns need not have the same capacity as of the base lun so all luns in a concatenated meta lun must be either protected that is uh, how it is done it is done by either parity or it is mirrored mirrored means we are going to have one more uh, copy of the data if it is using parity then we can uh, regenerate the data easily with the help of parity bits or it can be unprotected also if it is protected then these two methods will be used if it is unprotected and then uh, that means raid zero technique will be used so uh, raid types within a meta lun can be mixed so for example uh, a raid 1 slash 0 okay that is 1 plus 0 lun can be concatenated with raid 5 lun okay 
so in such case uh, also a red zero lun can be concatenated only with another red zero lun so if red 1 plus 0 is using means which which technique will be used that you should understand there we are going to make use of mirror also so in that case that i can combine with any other red level but when i am using only red 0 lun that means it is using only striping so in such cases i can combine this with only red 0 lun another red 0 lun okay so concatenated expansion is quick but it does not provide any performance benefit you can see it in the figure concatenated metal lun so we have one base base lun plus we have one component lun together it is a metal lun okay base lun and the component lun this component lun is nothing but the increased capacity okay next coming to striped expansion uh, this restripes the base lun base lun data across the base lun and the component lun okay in this what is going to happen it is going to restripe the data whatever is stored in the base lun on the base lun as well as component lun okay so in striped expansion all luns must be of the same capacity and of the same red level striped expansion provides improved performance due to the increased number of drives being striped because the data gets distributed on all of the drives existing okay it is also base lun as well as the component lun that are going to be striped so that is the reason it is giving some increase in the capa uh, capacity uh, sorry performance capacity is anyway increased so it is giving benefits of performance also you can see in the figure we have base lun and the component lun together it is going to become a meta lun wherein the data is striped over both the luns you can see one two three four five six that is one three five is on the base lun two four six is on the component lun so the increased capacity is marked over here you can see that so it is like a uh, space that we are collecting from each of the LUNs which will be which can be an increased capacity to the existing LUN so this is about striped metal LUN so all the LUNs in both concatenated as well as striped expansion should reside on the same disk drive type okay it can be either uh, fiber channel or it is a ATA ATA one okay so this is about physical storage provisioning or traditional storage provisioning next we shall see virtual storage provisioning virtual provisioning enables creating and presenting a LUN with more capacity than a physically allocated uh, to it on the storage array the LUN is created using the virtual provisioning called a thin LUN to distinguish it from the traditional LUN so it is called as thin LUN just to differentiate it from the traditional LUN so thin LUNs do not require physical storage to be completely allocated to them at the time they are created and presented to the host physical storage allocated to the host on demand from a shared pool of physical capacity so this shared pool consists of physical di physical disks a shared pool in virtual provisioning is analogous to a RAID group which is a collection of drives on which LANs are created. Similar to a RAID group, a shared pool supports a single RAID protection level. However, unlike a RAID group, a shared pool might contain large number of drives. Shared pools can be homogeneous which, containing, which is containing a single drive type or it may be heterogeneous which is containing mixed types of drives such as flash pc uh, sorry flash fc sas and sata drives okay homogeneous means of single type heterogeneous means of different types so uh, then virtual provisioning it enables more efficient allocation of storage to hosts this virtual provisioning also enables over subscription where more capacity is present presented to the host than actually available on the storage array so both shared pool and thin learn can be expanded non-disruptively as the storage requirements of the hosts grow okay 
So multiple shared pools can be created within a storage array and the shared pool can be shared by multiple thin LUNs okay uh, as it is given in the figures which is explaining the provisioning of the thin LUNs. You can see there is a shared storage pool which is called as thin pool. Here is the shared storage pool which is consisting of multiple disk drives and then we are get we are generating the thin lens from this that is by combining different uh, disk drives from the shared pool and then these thin lens can be sent to different uh, or can be connected to different hosts and if it is a virtual machine then we are going to have multiple virtual machines running on the host okay so that is also can be uh, connected to thin lens okay now let us compare both virtual and traditional storage provisioning so administrators typically allocate storage capacity based on anticipated storage requirements uh, this generally results in the over provisioning of storage capacity which then leads to higher costs and lower capacity utilization so administration administrators uh, often over provision storage to an apl application for various reasons such as to avoid frequent provisioning of storage if the LUN capacity is exhausted it should not happen that again and again we provide the storage capacity whenever the LUN gets uh, overloaded or the capacity gets exhausted so that is the reason at once the administrator will be over provisioning the storage to the application and also to reduce the disruption to application availability so whenever we are increasing the capacity of the storage of course the application has to be shut down or it has to be stopped from working so in order to avoid this disruption of uh, application availability we can over provision the storage to the applications so this over provisioning of storage uh, storage often leads to additional storage acquisition and operational costs okay then uh, virtual provisioning addresses these challenges okay this was happening in traditional method so when we are making use of virtual provisioning these challenges can be addressed virtual provisioning improves storage capacity utilization and simplifies storage management you can see in the figure 4.9 which shows the comparison of both uh, methods uh, it is showing virtual provisioning along with the traditional storage provisioning so when traditional provisioning is used three LUNs are created and presented on one or more hosts you can see on the left side three LUNs are created and it is provided to one or more hosts okay so the total storage capacity of the storage system is 2 tb now okay 2 terabytes okay so the allocated capacity of lan 1 is 500 gb of which only 100 gb is consumed and the remaining 400 gb is unused okay the size of lan 1 is 500 gb total capacity is 2, 2 tb among that lan 1 is having 500 gb of capacity in that only 100 GB is used and 400 GB is kept unused okay and coming to LUN2 the storage size of LUN2 is 550 GB okay of which only 50 GB is consumed and 500 GB is unused okay now coming to third LUN that is LUN3 its capacity is 800 GB of which only 200 GB is consumed and 600 GB is unused okay so in total the storage system has only 350 gb of data and 1.5 tb of allocated but unused capacity it has and only 150 gb of remaining capacity is available for other applications so this is what was happening with the traditional storage provisioning now let us consider the same 2 tb of storage system with the virtual provisioning you can see it in the figure b here three thin lens of same sizes are created however there is no allocated unused capacity in total 
uh, the storage system with virtual provisioning has the same 350 GB of data but 1.65 uh, TB of capacity is available for other applications whereas only 150 GB is available in the traditional storage provisioning with the help with the traditional method we had only 150 GB that was available to other applications but in case of virtual provisioning 1.65 TB of space can be provided to other applications so that is the advantage of virtual provisioning over the physical or traditional provisioning let us consider some use cases for thin and traditional lens virtual provisioning and thin lens offer many benefits although in some cases traditional lens is better suited for an application thin lens are appropriate for applications that can tolerate performance variations in some cases performance improvement is perceived uh, when using a thin lens due to striping across a large number of drives in the pool However, when multiple thin lens contain for a shared storage resource in a given pool and when the utilization reaches higher levels, the performance can be performance can get degraded. So thin lens provide the best storage space efficiency and are suitable for applications where space consumption is difficult for forecast. So using thin lens benefits organizations is reducing power and acquisition costs in simplifying and uh, also in simplifying their storage management. Traditional lens are suited for applications that require predictable performance. Traditional lens provide full control for precise data placement and allow an administrator to create lens on different thread groups if there is any workload contention. Organizations that are not highly concerned about storage space, space efficiency may still use the traditional lens. So both traditional and thin lens can coexist in the same storage array. Based on the requirements, the administrator may migrate data between thin as well as the traditional lens. So you can choose between um, thin lens and the traditional lens depending on the requirement of the application. Both can be implemented or both can coexist in the same storage array the next and last subtopic is LUN masking so LUN masking is basically a process that provides data access control by defining which LUNs a host can access uh, the LUN masking function is implemented on the storage array this ensures that volume access by the host is controlled appropriately, preventing unauthorized or accidental use in a shared environment. So for example, consider a storage array with two LUNs that store the data of the sales and finance departments. Without LUN masking, that means without using this LUN masking technique, both departments can easily see and modify each other's data posing a high risk to the data integrity as well as security if i'm using LUN mask that is with the use of LUN masking LUNs are accessible only to the designated host we can control the access to these LUNs with the help of LUN masking basically it is a process which provides data access control uh, by defining the uh, which lens only that particular host can access okay a particular host can access only those particular lens this is done with the help of LUN masking process so this completes module number one thank you for watching